So you're a citizen of an EU country like me, and you want to live in Spain. I'm not an expert. No, but I am going to present to you the official information provided by specialists and provide comprehensive links to government websites so you can know the facts about how to register as a resident of this wonderful country. Welcome to You to Spain. Let's dance. Hi, I'm Scats, and today's topic is the relatively easy process of registering your intention to live in Spain if you're a citizen of an EU country. Why is it easy? Well, because you're an EU citizen, you have the right to live and work in Spain. Hooray! And that means you don't need to apply for a visa to live here. Even more hooray! Normally, I use the phrase, it depends, an awful lot in these helpful videos, because, especially when it comes to getting Getting visas, every individual case can bring up differences in the process and the documentation needed. But for EU citizens, there are fewer differences to deal with. We love the EU! Ah yes, so let's run through what you need to do and I'll try to cover some of the most common issues. Should you get professional help? Personally, I'd advise you get expert help from a recommended professional if your case is complicated or if you don't speak any Spanish at all. But it's totally up to you. If you're feeling brave and confident after watching this video, give it a go. What's the first part of the process? First thing to do is book an appointment with the foreigner's office at a national police station. How do you do that? I'll put a link in the video description below marked immigration officers. Just pick the autonomous region you've moved to first, then on the next screen pick the city that covers your province. Does every office have the same process? Different cities seem to have different ways of making appointments. Some you can use their online system, for others it's an email or a telephone call, and some it just tells you the opening hours, which suggests you can just turn up and queue. This is where you'll probably need some Spanish to get by. My advice is to ask them first if you've not got an experienced advisor with you. So, what documents must you take to your appointment? Let's make a list. Number one, a Padron Certificate. Certificado de Empadronamiento. This is kind of the equivalent of being on the electoral register or census in other countries and is the official proof of your residential address. I've made a video all about how to get one of these from your local town hall. Once again, the link is down below. There's also a link to find your local town hall. Ajuntamiento. Marvellous. Number two, your passport, which must of course be valid. Also, take a photocopy of the main double page with you. Number three, a filled in copy of the application form, which is called the Modelo EX-18. There's a link below to download the form. Also make sure you take a copy of this with you. Number four, proof of payment of the fee. The form for this is the Modelo 790-012. Once again, the link is below to download this. There are several ways to pay it in advance. I've left you a link for the tax office. Number five, this is where it depends comes into play. If you're going to be employed and you've already arranged a work contract, you should bring your contract of employment or other proof of employment status, like registration in the Register of Economic Activities or with the relevant social security scheme. What about if you're self-employed? The same goes for self-employed people. This proof will also show that you have state healthcare cover. Problem! Now, this raises an interesting catch-22 situation. To register on the social security system, you first need an NIE, Foreigner's Identification Number. That's normally allocated at your residency appointment, but if you're going to be self-employed, you need it before then to register with social security. I'm stuck in a loop! In that case, and this is what happened to me, you first have to go and get your NIE and be prepared to cut through any confusion this might cause with the official asking why you're doing it in this order. 
This is the sort of situation that has officials sending you running backwards and forwards to different offices and causing people to scream blue murder about Spain's ridiculous bureaucracy. My advice, get yourself someone like Chris from upsticks.es to be there with you. Number six. If you're not going to be working, you'll need to show proof of state or private health cover for you and your family members. Your health insurance provider should give you a certificate of cover in Spanish. Number seven. Another. It depends. If you're a student, you must show proof of enrollment at a private or public establishment accredited or financed by the competent education authority. And you'll also need that proof of health care cover that I just mentioned. And that's about it, except for this. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below the video on YouTube so that the answers can help everyone else too. Subscribe and click on the bell to be the first to hear each time I release a new very helpful video just for you. And also, join me every Saturday morning for the live Q&A, when you and I can both ask questions to the experts and get the answers you need. It's a win-win-win with a cherry on top. Peace and love. Peas and fluff. Let's dance.